When I'm building applications, I usually build them according to user flows. So we've done our authentication flows to sign users up. But now what happens next? So we need to sign HANA up, which we'll do shortly. We need to send it to the company page. Again, we'll do shortly. But then, then what? Because there is nothing to view in terms of an overview standpoint. There aren't any jobs, there are no candidates. We don't just want HANA to arrive to an empty dashboard. Naturally, we need her to fill out her settings, fill out her name, company details, her image, logos, that kind of thing. So we're gonna focus now on setting up the settings view for the rest of this section, okay? Quite a lot to do here, but let's dive in. So back on the company page, let's grab a group. Click the group once and just draw in a basic shape anywhere. It's going to pull to the top. Let's name this group container. And I want this container to sit to the right of this floating group nav bar, not underneath, and also beneath this nav bar. So to the right of floating group menu and beneath floating group nav, okay? I'm just gonna grab my container again. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I can't see what's going on here, I'm just gonna add some flat color uh, and make it maybe this blue color at 10%. This will just help me visualize how it's been laid out on the page. Now head over to the, your layout tab and remove the min width, remove the min height. Okay, it's gonna close right down, but then uncheck fit height to content so that it spans the full height of this page. Let's move it now to the right-hand side of floating group menu. So I'm going to use some left margin here, not the padding, folks, the margin above it. Choose 260. And now it starts to the right, much like our floating group nav. Let's drop it beneath the nav. So let's choose 80 on the top. And now it's going to fill all of the rest of the screen real estate, just where we want it. Now I am going to add some more padding here because we're going to drop some content inside. We don't want that content ever sort of just sitting naturally uh, against the bottom of this nav or against the left hand side here or right on the floor down here. Okay. So we're going to choose top of 48. This is now the padding, not margin, bottom 48. And then left, right, 32 on each. Perfect. After you've done that, we can just switch back to flat color primary contrast. Fantastic. So the purpose of the container is just to fill all of the other space. And we've spoken about this at length. We don't just drop elements on the page. So we need a container to contain our stuff. Next, we're going to drop in the group settings view. Okay. So I'm going to find another group. I'm going to draw it inside the container. I'm going to name this group settings. Now I do want a max width and group settings. And in the past when I've worked for clients, some of them have wanted their data more sort of centered in the page. And then other clients have had real data heavy tables and charts and they just wanted more screen real estate. So it's a creative choice. The max width you want to set, but you most probably do want a max width because I'm in quite a big monitor and it would be difficult and quite jarring for data just to fill the entire screen. You do want a max width and that's what we're using this container for is to allow us to center this group settings and then allow us to set a max width on this group settings. So let's change the background style to flat color so we can see what we're doing. And this time we can just use our surface color. Okay, so currently it's spanning edge to edge aside from this 32 pixels of padding, left, right, and then top padding. I do want it to fill the rest of this group though. So I'm going to uncheck fit height to content and I'm going to remove them in height. We don't need any min width here either. Perfect. But I am going to say that I want a max width here. Okay, let's try 992 and have a look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we can vertically, sorry, now we can horizontally align in the center. Okay, and if I click back on group container, you can see there's a bit of space here because of this max width. And for what we're trying to build, 
this max width that I tried it, you know, and I thought it looked good. I also tried 1200 and thought, that's not necessary. Let's contain it and this is faster to navigate and see our data. Okay, so we don't need any padding because the padding is set by group container. Now on the layout tab, guys, we're going to uncheck this element is visible on page load because we're going to be using URL parameters to decide which group is visible at which point. So V needs to equal settings for this group to, to be visible. The next thing we're going to do is just below that, we have collapse when hidden. We're going to check that as well, because if we don't check collapse when hidden, then that vertical space will remain and it'll be really difficult for users to scroll down the page and find these big empty vertical space areas. So whenever something is hidden, we collapse it so that it feels like it doesn't even exist. But now we need to instruct bubble in the conditional tab of group settings that we'd like to see it when V equals settings. Okay, so we're going to define another condition. We're going to say get and select get data from page URL. The parameter name is V. And then we're going to say is select that in the operator and then type out settings. Perfect. Now click the drop down and let's say this element is visible and bubble has checked it by default. Again, not visible in page load, but is visible when the parameter V equals settings is true. Fantastic. Now we can just change this back to a standard group. So I'm just going to do that again. It's better to set styles where you can. Okay, let's grab some text and just get the word settings in there. I'm going to click on text and I'm going to drop it inside group settings. I'm going to type settings. And I'm going to choose probably a H4 here. All right, I'm going to edit the style of this H4. Please do the same and just make sure that we have 36 pixels. You might have 25 or something else. Just make sure we have 36 pixels and we're going to choose semi bold. Okay, and then the text color needs to be our default color, which it will be by default. Looking really good. Let's grab some more text, drop it in. And let's just type, here are your personal and company details. And we can remain on body medium style for that. On the layout tab, let's just remove the min width and the min height. Okay, once you've done that, highlight both of them with the shift key. Right click group elements in a column. And let's rename this to group header. And let's add some gap spacing of four pixels. Really good. So just make sure on group settings itself that you have visible on page load unchecked with collapse when hidden checked. And when you confirm that, let's actually preview the page. Let's refresh. So currently V equals overview. If I click across the settings, let's just see what's happened here. V equals settings. Ah, here's a lesson. I spelled the parameter incorrectly. I type setting where it should be settings. And I'm gonna leave this mistake in here for you to prove the point that these parameters need to be named correctly. Okay, let's refresh the page again. My parameter still exists in there. And there we can go, there's the settings and I can click away and I can click back. And guys, that's how we do dashboard navigation using URL parameters. Um, I hope that was really useful and I'll see you in the next lesson.